Hey there and welcome back. David from Unqualified Critics. Today I have a pretty interesting contraption. This isn't really from a company proper. It's from one guy that has put this together, including some pretty detailed instructions. Honestly, the whole thing looks pretty impressive at first blush. His name is Stefan Berger. If you want to get a hold of him, check him out on Facebook. I'll leave a link to his personal Facebook page. He doesn't have any kind of corporate address or website or anything like that. So if you're interested in buying one of these, that's who you contact, just send them a message. This is a switchable restrictor gate and it is designed to be switchable with the push of a button. It is electronic, so you will need to get power to this and kind of already opened this up ahead of time just because I wanted to take a look. But let's go through this real quick. So I've not installed this yet. I don't yet fully know how it works, but the basic piece is this. It's your restrictor gate. And you can see the insert does rotate electronically. And it hooks up to this Arduino board. I think it's an Arduino board. And you have to get power to this board. And that's always the problem with any accessory for an arcade one up is how do you get power in the cabinet? It'd have been really dope if they gave us some extra USB ports for power uh, off the PCB, but they don't. And yeah, I did try the micro USB port that's present on the Gen 3 Arcade 1UP boards. It seems to be a data port only, and it does not seem to carry any power. Now, a lot of people assume because this is a data port, you could connect an ethernet cable through this, for example, with the right adapter. Surely it carries power, but that is not necessarily true. You can have a data port that does not carry power, and that seems to be the case here, unfortunately. So this is gonna be your power cord. And then you do get, I mean, this is a really complete kit. You do get a wall plate. That's um, more than you got with the PlayStation Mini, so that's pretty cool. Got some serial cables here to hook everything up. And this is the four joystick kit. Now there's also a two joystick kit and I think it comes with one fewer button. The button is what will activate the joysticks. And I think one is for player one and the other is for player two. This is designed, I believe, for the Burger Time cabinet really where you have four joysticks. Now I have a Burger Time and that's why I want this product. So I'm super excited to try it out. I don't think I'm gonna actually install all four of them, however. The Burger Time cabinet has two joysticks that are only ever used for one game, Karate Champ, the right facing sticks for both player one and player two. Those should be permanently in four-way position. You can't use them for the eight-way game, so there's really never a need to adjust them. So my plan right now is to currently just set up two of these bad boys. Now I couldn't use the other two anywhere else because I only have the one control board I'd have to get an additional control board, but that might be something I'll look into later because this would be nice to use for the Legends Ultimate. And I guess I should mention that as at the outset, why would you want this product? Well, you wanna be able to move between four-way and eight-way games dynamically. A multi-cade like Legends Ultimate or the upcoming IR arcade is gonna be great for this, or if you have a do-it-yourself, it'd work there too. But for me, I have one specific case in mind and it's the Burger Time. This would also be helpful for Frogger. Now Frogger isn't out yet, but Frogger has been paired with Time Pilot. Frogger is a four-way game, Time Pilot's an eight-way game, just like Burger Time is a four-way game, but it's paired with Caveman Ninja, for example, which is an eight-way game. I think that's a huge oversight, and honestly, I don't understand why Arcade Up doesn't build one of these or contract with this guy for parts or something. Having perfect controls should be Arcade Up's biggest competitive advantage over a multi-cade, and sometimes they hit it out of the park and sometimes they don't. And with burger time, they really missed. So my hope is this kit will help me fix that. Now I've got to say, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm not a big fan of drilling holes. These are new buttons and the general way to install this would be to put a new hole in your control panel. I doubt I will do that. My first thought is to wire the button actually to the back of the cabinet. And so you could imagine reaching to the back tapping the button and switching the joystick from four to eight. Because it's not like I'm gonna be doing this every 30 seconds and switching back and forth all the time. I just need to be able to hit it every so often, as long as it's easily accessed in the back or maybe even out the top panel, that H panel that's angled away from the monitor on the back, something like that. That's probably what I'm gonna to look to do. We'll take a look. Hopefully I can figure this thing out. If you're watching this 
far, then that means that later on I did eventually figure out how to hook this up. So I'll catch you on the other side. And we have liftoff. So the button actually has two buttons. One is eight way, one is four way. So they're not toggle back and forth. Now it's just gonna be a question of getting power inside my cabinet in a way that doesn't look like trash and getting this thing hooked up. Let's see how it goes. All right, so as I've spent more time with this, I've started to understand it better. These buttons are each two way buttons and the idea is you have an option. You can either add an entirely new hole for this, which is gonna do four way versus eight way, or you can use the existing holes and you take player one and move and get rid of that button and replace it with one of these double buttons. And then replace this with yet another double button so that now this with the wiring harness which is this piece, will interact with your existing arcade one-up board to switch between player one and player two. And so you're not adding any new holes to the cabinet. That's a pretty ingenious design. They're not designed to, to switch the extra two gates like I thought they were. I thought that's what the extra button was about. But no, the button will always switch all the gates at the same time. As you can see, I'm only adding gates for players one and two. Uh, primary stick because this stick is always going to be in four-way mode for karate champ I'm never going to need to use that second stick for anything else but I guess for completion's sake it's cool you get both one other note on installation it is important that you line these up that the brown wire is ground and that it shows up that you are in line brown to ground brown to ground all right, so here we are with a fully installed four-way, eight-way switchable gate system in the burger time. The cabinet that needs this the most. Now, this would also benefit Nat Games Legends Ultimate and a Frogger Arcade one up, which I already mentioned. But for me, burger time was the one that really, really needed this. Okay, so I mounted the button on the back of the cabinet. Looks a little goofy back here, but I'm never back here, so it works out nicely. You just reach, hit the button, pop it four way and then switch it to eight way works nice and smooth now i did have to get an extra long ribbon cable to connect this to the arduino board because that ribbon cable it comes with is designed to just take the board which is mounted underneath the control panel to the buttons here in the center of the control panel i just didn't want to mess with this i like the yellow buttons and i'm kind of a completionist with how these cabinets roll now, as I mentioned, unfortunately, I wasn't able to draw power from the existing PCB board. So I just simply bought a, an outlet splitter here with some USB ports and I've got the USB plug there. And that is what powers. Also ran the USB cord through the slot holes or through the slots. I guess it's kind of redundant to call them slot holes. It's implied that it's a hole and that it's a slot. So I did all this with zero damage to the cabinet. Doesn't look super elegant, but all of that is hidden on the rear, so it's good to go. All right, guys, that is the four-way, eight-way switchable gate mechanism. I really recommend this. I'm not sure what the final price is going to be if you do end up buying it. Hopefully, it's a reasonable cost. It's an interesting invention from the Stefan gentleman. I'm going to put a link below to his Facebook page. So send him a message on Facebook if you want to buy one from him. I do recommend it. It's been a while now that I've had my Burger Time cabinet. And now that the four-way and eight-way is fixed, I can say I'm pretty satisfied with it. The joystick quality is still cheaper than I'd like. I already noticed my player one stick getting a little less responsive than player two. It's a very subtle difference, but it's there. We wouldn't have that problem if we'd have got proper Sanwa or Hap or whatever. Name your favorite brand controls. So... I continue to beat that drum. I also feel pretty strongly that four-way versus eight-way switchable is important for a game like this. If you don't feel that's the case, then save yourself some money and stick with those eight-way gates. But if you wanna play this as it was designed to be played in the arcade originally, and you wanna be able to play all four games that come on the cabinet, you're gonna need something like this that actively switches the two gates. And if anybody ever tells you that Bad Dudes and Caveman Ninja are not eight-way games, or you don't really need the diagonal, it's just not true. If I get an arcade game, I want to play it like it was played in the arcade. Otherwise, I'd be playing it on my PC. 
Thanks for watching, and if you've been enjoying the channel, I'd like to invite you to join the channel as an official member. Hit that join button below and you'll have two choices, 99 cents a month or $1.99 a month. Get shout outs, get custom logo next to your name in your comments. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Dripping lights, paint the sky.